What's up guys? This is Automotive Anonymous and what I do if you're unfamiliar are car reviews, zero to six season and other fun stuff. Today's kind of a cool day because it's the six month anniversary of when I started this channel as a hobby. Anyways, we're gonna get right into it. This is the Forester Limited, generously borrowed by Twin Falls Subaru in Southern Idaho. I'll link it below if you guys are interested because it's a pretty darn cool vehicle. I've now reviewed five of the six trim levels of the Forester for 2023 and we're gonna get into the specs with this walk around go through initial driving impressions zero to 60 and final thoughts and decide is this vehicle worth your time and money and while I have your attention if you guys like my content if you want to support the channel and help it grow over the next six months please consider liking to help the vehicle review get shared subscribe to help the channel grow and comment below to tell me what you want to see next there's cool stuff coming all the time and we're gonna have a lot of fun with it but to the Forester, this is the magnetic gray metallic baby. It's a pretty cool color. It's in the fifth gen of the Forester. They started in 2019 and they had a refresh front end last year, which looks pretty darn cool. It looks a little bit more aggressive, kind of like what Toyota did with the RAV4 with their last refresh. The base starts at 26 grand. This Limited being the fifth of the six trim levels is up a little bit higher than that. The way this one is specced with a few other goodies is about 37 grand and it's just under MSRP. Subaru sells 154 to 180,000 of these every single year in the United States, so it's a pretty popular vehicle. This and the Outback compete as its most popular vehicles. I'll show you the engine soon. It's a 2.5 boxer with 182 horse, 176 pound feet of torque, and a CVT. It's roughly 15 feet long, 6 feet wide, and 5.5 and feet tall. It's about the same length as a Crosstrek, almost a foot shorter than the Outback. They weigh about 3,500 pounds, which is conveniently the same as about 50 good-sized Golden Retrievers. 8.7 inches of ground clearance with a 3.7 final drive ratio. If it was the Wilderness, it would be a 411. What that means is it puts the power down, but it also is conservative with your MPG. Speaking of, the gas tank's on the passenger side. It gets 26 city, 33 highway, so with a 16.6 gallon tank, you're looking at about 550 miles between stops. If you really wanted to push the limit, anyways. It has a 225-55-18 inch wheel. They look really good, Falcon tires. The Limited is pretty cool. It has a few chrome accents throughout. It has halogen fog lights, but LED lights are standard on this, bringing it to be a top safety pick. And those LEDs at night are super duper bright. I'm really glad that Subaru has included that even on the base trim level. But let's get inside and out of the wind. Let's see what else you get. Door panel looks fantastic. You of course get the lunar moon landing surface because it's a Forester chrome handle. A nice just brushed aluminum type accents throughout. You get a lighter interior color, good stitching, soft touch armrest, and like a whopping 10 finger hold for the grab handle with the lip. You of course have your window and mirror adjustments there. Herman Cardin advertised. And then you get your bottle holder and you could fit about two Pop-Tarts wide or probably a week's worth of your dog's milk bones. Nothing on the door sill plate other than the smallest Subaru that they could 3D print right there. I think they're getting smaller with every new generation. You have nice Forester listed floor mats, rubberized pedals, head release, fuse box. It's pretty loaded up with options right there. Trip reset, ventilation, 10-way power adjustment with the lumbar support. Really nice leather seats. This one, it doesn't extend, but it feels so good you really don't need it. The same color theme follows throughout on the center console and the dashboard. But let's get in and fire it up. Fires right up. If you don't like the auto start stop feature, that's one of those buttons down there you can turn off got the paddle shifters so when you want to drop it down to manual mode slap it over musical simulated gears if you want but otherwise the CVT does a pretty good job voice controls and audio on the left all the adaptive cruise features on the right sport mode intelligent mode heated steering wheel that should be turned on all the time horn sounds pretty good and then if we go through the info we get some good stuff this one also has reverse automatic braking with that upgraded Harman Kardon 8 inch screen. And then going through the little mini paddles down here. Yeah, a little bit more information. 
The eight inch screen does a pretty good job. CD player, physical buttons, physical buttons. Those are disappearing on so many vehicles. You're gonna really appreciate that. Down here, aux, two USB, and a 12 volt hiding away in the rubberized lining pocket. Piano black around the shifter looks really good. Heated seats, dual mode, X mode, electronic parking brake, and auto vehicle hold. Those buttons are right where they need to be. Two good sized cup holders and a CD holder. Unless you're fitting two more Pop-Tarts back there for some of your backseat passengers. They can't see it from back here. If they're not a golden retriever, they can't smell it either. So it's kind of a cool place to hide them. 12 volt in the center console. It's really comfortable. It's not huge, but it is a good size, about half the length of my forearm, I would say. And then up top, you got the compass, you got the auto dimming mirrors. Home link, that turns off the dimming mirrors. A few more safety features you could turn on or off if you don't like them being on. You have a sunglass holder. And then up top, we got the ginormous sunroof, moonroof. Slides open with the push of a button. And it's fantastic. I wish my Outback Wilderness had one that big. But you Forester guys, you don't get the turbo, but you get the giant moonroof. So that might be a fair trade-off, depending on who you are. Let's turn it off with the push button start. Top in the back. You'll also notice proximity key so you can open and close the door just by having the key on you. You don't even have to be using those buttons. The back door panel, the themes follow. You get all the same materials. You just lose a few of those extra settings. You only get to control your own window, not another person's bottle holder and some extra snacks. What are you gonna put down there? Leave it in the comments. And then while you're thinking about it, enjoy some more lunar moon landing down here. Another baby size 3D printed Subaru, you get some grip. So if you're standing up here to use those roof rails, you have a little bit extra height. Really good seats, it's a 60-40 drop. They're light, they're easy to move, and you can just throw them right back. Sitting behind herself, I get the double map pocket with the pan flips. I got probably four inches of room back here. Ventilation, 2.1 amp USBs. I just don't have heated seats back here. And look at the view. Natural light, LED light. I'm sitting comfortably, and I could bring a couple extra drinks back here. Two if I don't have another passenger, and one if I'm just on my own. Not too bad. I mentioned the key but there's one more way to get into the vehicle. You could push the button down here, you could push the button on the remote, or if you don't have the remote, or if you turn it off if you're camping, hiking, swimming, anything like that, you have a push button that you could set with a pin code. I have a video on how to set that. It's a pretty cool secret that Subaru has kept, but we're just gonna use the remote and open it up. In the back, we get a little bit over 30 cubic feet of room with the seats up, about 75 with them down, so it's actually about the same as the Outback. It's just a little bit wider, a little bit taller. It's just not as long, losing about 10 inches. You have the all-weather mat right here. You could easily drop the seats, USB, some bag holders, some lightweight tie-downs, and you got the privacy shade. So pretty cool. Harman Kardon sub back here, another seat dropper. And then spare tire under here. It's not a full size though, like you would get on the wilderness. You got some storage down here for your blankets, your purse, your purse your belongings, whatever you want to hide down here. I want to know, so comment below. You can also hide the privacy shade if it's in the groove. And there it is with the extra tools. Not too bad. One touch to drop. You could also lock it from back here. Single tip tailpipe. Again, 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And the Forester has a really good departure angle. Gas tank located right there when the vehicle's unlocked. So is it, if it's locked, so is that. No one's siphoning your gas. All right, door panel, you guys know what they look like. Really cool. Double mat pocket, even the back seat, driver, passenger, wherever you're sitting, you get to know that you have airbags throughout. They're just listed everywhere. That is a safety feature to know that they're there, but it's also kind of fun to know that you're gonna be well off in an accident. Seat is very comfortable, and holy cow, does that lighter color really light up the interior back here. To the shotgun seat, you know what it looks like. Again, it follows the theme of the driver's side. Decent sized bottle holder and a long, more narrow 
pocket for your Slim Jims, your graham crackers, whatever else. This one is just under MSRP right there. If you're interested, I'll link it below. You get manual adjustments on the limited though. That is a little bit surprising to me with how many other great features you get, but I'm not riding passenger, so I'm not complaining. Locking glove box, no 12 volt or anything, but you do get your pamphlets, your packet, and your screwdriver to operate those roof rails. Let's go around, let's pop the hood and see where the boxer lives. Under the hood, it should look familiar if you've seen any of my other Subaru videos. It's a really well thought out, well engineered layout, and I like it. Subaru has done a fantastic job. You got all of your reservoirs, coolant, windshield fluid, top mount oil filter, so it can't get dinged up and make a big mess when you change that underneath. Zero W20 full synthetic oil fill, battery positive, terminal negative, terminal brake fluid reservoir. Get a little bit of heat extraction, which if nothing else, it just looks good on the top of that Subaru Boxer. Serpentine belt is right up front. It would be super duper easy to change. Oil dipstick right there, alternator. And then induction, air filter, baffling right into the block. It's a really cool design. There's a lot of room under here if you ever were to do your own maintenance or if you were to pay someone else to do it, it really shouldn't be that expensive. Let's drop the hood and take it for a drive. driving impressions of the Forester Limited are that it's really good. These lighter accents like on the door, which are comfortable armrests, the dashboard, and just the leather in general on the back seat, they feel really good. It really brightens things up, which I mean it already did a pretty good job with just how big these windows are. I would recommend getting the front half tinted because it feels a little bit like a fishbowl. It's really not that bad with your driver position. The roof does a good job of cutting down sunlight, although today's not an exceptionally sunny day out. I think you are gonna want to tint the front half. It'll make the vehicle look better, it'll be cooler inside, and you'll just have a little bit more privacy. Steering wheel comfort's really good. I love the heated feature. Again, that's on the bottom right side, not to be confused with the lane keep assist right there. The 8-inch screen with the Harman Kardon speakers and navigation is a nice touch for this vehicle. There's that CD player. I think it's really nice that Subaru has kept the CD player. I think this style of CUV is one that's going to be greatly missed if it goes away, if CDs are altogether gone on the next generation. And we just don't have the same visibility. We don't have the same simple layout that the Forester is known for. Everything's right where you want it to be. Armrest comfort is just fantastic. It's right in the middle. Drink holders are low enough that they're basically out of the way unless you're really drinking some big boy tall sippy cup or something. Otherwise, it's just a nice place to be. Shorter wheelbase than the Ascent and the Outback, but it still feels extremely stable on the road. That 8.7 inches of ground clearance goes really far on this type of a wheelbase, and with the sidewall you still have on these 18 inch wheels. It's just a comfortable place to be. The blind spot mirroring, the turn signals on the mirrors, and just the self-dimming mirrors in general are really nice. Having the navigation, the compass up top is fantastic. I sit up tall and upright. The seats are comfortable. Even the backpack agrees, and that's not always the case. The bolstering is enough to keep you in place, but it's not too aggressive that most people are gonna have a good time in these seats, especially with the soft touch leather material the heated feature again down there. It just feels really good. The touring is fantastic, but this is so darn close, it might be worth saving a couple grand and just going with this limited. Having the Harman Kardon speakers sound fantastic. We are in sport mode, so we're gonna do a little bit of a run to get up to speed before we do our true zero to 60. And it's okay, density altitude's not too bad today, so it puts the power down pretty well. If you are towing, if you have the vehicle weighted down, if you have a rooftop tent or you're, you got a little trailer behind you, or if you drive through the mountains, you might want a more powerful vehicle like the Ascent or the Outback Turbo. But if you're just driving around town, through the city, you're unloaded, you're not at a really high climate, this 2.5 Boxer is fine, it's not a big deal. A CVT 
does feel pretty smooth and I think they get smoother every new year, every new generation. Subaru does seem to have just about the best in the game compared to what I've seen and what I've heard from other manufacturers. Road noise, wind noise, I don't think is that bad. Maybe someday we'll get a decibel reader between vehicles, but right now we have about a nine mile per hour wind and the vehicle's doing pretty good. Especially with the Harman Kardon speakers, you don't have to have them on very loud to tune out any unwanted road or wind noise. It's not the battle of the unpleasant sounds in here. That's pretty good. But let's get to our private road. I wanna show you what it does, zero to 60 on GPS. Zero to 60, we have traction off or in sport mode. Density altitude's only about 2,100 feet, even though our real altitude's about 3,800. So that means the vehicle's down on power only about 7%. I'll verbalize the true zero to 60, and then I'll show the GPS graph right after. The bottom left shows what it does without the foot of rollout. That's the way they're rated by the magazine. Let's go, brake rev. With that 3.7 final drive ratio, it puts the power down quite well, although you can tell it's not quite what the Wilderness does in that initial second of launch. However, 0 to 60 still came in at 9.44 for our area, our altitude and everything. That's actually not too bad. Let's get to our final thoughts. Final thoughts of the Forester Limited are, it's really darn good. This is again, the fifth of the six Forester trims for 2023 that I've reviewed now. The only one I haven't got my hands on are a base because those are kind of hard to find. The best sellers are probably the premium and the sport, but the limited has a lot of nice upgraded features, especially if you're not looking to spend the full price tag of the touring. But this is an incredible vehicle. I've said it before. I've said it on multiple videos. If the Forester had a turbo, I would probably be driving some variation of this over my Outback Wilderness. Not that I don't love the Outback, but the Forester has better visibility and more upright driving position. It doesn't have the length, which means it handles really well around town. It's easier to park, easier to fit in the garage. All things that right now I value those attributes of it, but they sell about the same as the Outback, so you're really not missing out on either one. Or if you were to go with a different trim level of the Forester, I think it competes well in its price point with basically a lot of the other economical competitors. So you're really not finding, you know, the perfect diamond in the rough for which one is worth it, which ones aren't. You're just paying a little bit more for more upscale features. And this one offers a whole lot of goodies. If you guys like my video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Otherwise, if you're interested in this or checking out the great inventory below, follow the link to their website. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one.